Good day, everyone, and to welcome to this lecture where we're going to discuss, just to run through a typical example of a payment certificate. In our previous lecture, we discussed the payment uh, clause 25 of the JBCC principal agreement, and we've learned quite a few um, items that we need to take into account when we prepare a payment certificate. Obviously, it was noted in the clause 25, we've talked about the recovery statement, we talked about a notification and advice to the subcontractors, and also we need to include certain uh, items in our payment certificate, such as default interest if the employer is late in payment. This is just a, a typical example, illustration. So let's look at the first payment certificate, and that is the, the official certificate that you're going to prepare. Now, this specific example, it is a certificate number nine, and it is referred to as an interim payment certificate. We'll only issue a final certificate if it's based on the final account, when the project is now finished, and we've reached uh, practical, uh, practical completion was reached, the final completion certificate was issued, and then we issue a final uh, payment certificate. So this one is still a interim uh, payment certificate, certificate number nine. All the information will, uh, will be the same as from certificate one, so all the data, the detail will remain the same. If we look at the dates, and it's very important to take note of, of this, the valuation date is the actual date where you been on site. When you go on site and you evaluate the work and you go back to the office and then prepare the payment certificate, then you, you'll note the issue date is when you actually forward as a quantity surveyor when you actually submit your payment certificate or to the principal agent. So there could be a date here that you've been on site today and perhaps maybe in three, four days only, you will then issue the certificate. The JBCC also learned us that we've got 14 days to, for the uh, employer to pay the contractor. So the 14 days, will be from the 31st of January and then issue the certificate to be paid on the 14th of February. So there is your 14 days that the contractor must be paid. It's also important that the date at the bottom of your certificate, in this case, is also your date of the issue date. So this date is very important. So the quantity surveyor should also look at the, the next certificate. When was the, the certificate actually certified by the principal agent? Because the QS have this date. The, the question is, did the, pay, the principal agent issue that certificate on the 31st of January? If the principal agent issued, let's say, on the 2nd of February, then the 14 days will only be uh, effective from the second date, the 2nd of, of February. So it's, you need to uh, liaise with the principal agent. When was his certificate? Because ultimately the JBCC states that the principal agent, the 14 days uh, will be effective as from the principal agent's date of issue. Good, so it's important that the 14 days will then be uh, from the date of issue of certificate. And then on the 14th, the contractor must be paid. If the contractor is paid on, on the 12th or the 10th, he's still on time. If the contractor now is paid on the 15th of February, the uh, employer is late in payment and then we'll take into account default interest. Now, you also note that the JBCC uh, payment certificate is uh, these four uh, uh, columns. 
the first column A uh, talks about the contract sum, and the contract sum is actually the tender amount. You can read up in the definitions uh, in the first few pages of the principal agreement, the definition of the contract sum. In a nutshell, is the tender uh, figure, and that is fixed. The contract value is the variable one. And that is almost the final value of the project. So we'll start off with a fixed amount and it, depending on the circumstances, obviously these will be changes. You're gonna remeasure foundations. There might be a saving, it might be extra. So all that contract instructions will have an effect. So at the end of the day, you will determine the project value, which is the contract value. Column A will remain the same. The values in column A will remain the same as from certificate one right up till the very last payment certificate. So if we look at the contract sum, column A, which actually reflects the original tender figure based on the price to bill of quantities. You'll note in this case, we've got a net contract sum of 4.5. 113 million, which is excluding VAT. Now, based on this figure, the, the quantity surveyor will then estimate what is the a reasonable amount that we could allow for escalation, cost fluctuations, that escal escalation. So based on the a net contract sum, the tender figure without VAT, the quantity surveyor estimated that for this specific project, we could estimate an anticipated value for escalation in the order of 200,000 Rand. So if we add up the two, that will give me a subtotal. We add the VAT and we got a expected uh, final contract value of 4.59 million an adjusted contract sum because we've added the escalation. So column A, those values will remain the same from certificate one right up till the end. So the 200,000 Rand in this case is an estimated figure. If we look at column B, which is the, the variable column, and this column B is almost to indicate to the client every month, what is the expected final value of the project? So we start with our tender figure, all right? Those two figures are the same. We start off with the tender figure. We also, in this particular block, we indicate the value of all contract instructions, authorized adjustment to the contract value. Now that's all the possible changes, these contract instructions in the form of omit vinyl tiles and add carpets. There's a cost implication and there's a, a remeasurement of foundations, remeasurement of plumbing and drainage. It's all contract instructions and there's a cost implication, either a saving or an extra. So all those contract instructions we have to combine and put in a figure here, either a saving or extra. So if you look at this specific figure here of 35,000 Rand, that indicates an extra on the project. If, if it was a saving, then we deduct a negative figure. So we take the original net contract sum plus the, an estimated value for contract instructions up till that point of 35,000 Rand. And now because we've got an extra 35,000 Rand added to the project, our escalation will also increase. So in this case, the, the quantity surveyor will uh, estimate and say, well, based on the additional 35,000 Rand, I will add another 5,000 Rand for escalation. So the total escalation estimated is now 205,000 Rand. So Mr. Client, you could expect your building uh, to cost you in an order of 5 million Rand. So next month, when I'm gonna do a payment certificate, let's say certificate number, Number 10, my column A values remains the same. The only variable now is the two, either 
extra on the project. It could be now uh, next month forty thousand rand, or it could we could have let's say a saving, and then obviously my escalation will then uh, adjust be adjusted uh, appropriately, or, uh, depending on the amount that we've added to the contract instructions. So the variable column is column B. It will give the client the column B. The purpose of column B is, in other words, to give the client and a forecast of what is the anticipated final contract value of the project. Column C and D relates to the actual certificate. So in this case, certificate nine. So the column C and D is the values related to the payment certificate nine i'm not going to go through how did we get to this figure this is just a typical example we will do exercises where we're going to determine the actual value so we'll start off by evaluating the pro the the value of work done and in this case 3.99 million so there's a various approach that we can follow as we've mentioned uh, some approaches could be a percentage times it by the value of the trade, or we could use the actual bill of quantities and add uh, actual quantities to, to the bill and to determine the actual value of work done. Obviously, um, within that value, we need to take into account any possible extras. Contract instructions will then be included. There's also a value that we need to add for materials on site. So in this case, it was a zero. And um, my perception uh, and assumption here is it is a practical completion certificate. So at practical completion, there would be no uh, money certified because the building is 100% complete. So if there was, let's say, bricks and cement and uh, all other material on site, we'll just add, let's say, 100,000 rand. To that and then obviously you'll see my total will then uh, be uh, adjusted accordingly it could be let's say 50,000 rand uh, uh, material on off-site in other words remember the the rules and regulation when we certify that all materials must be certified uh, insured etc we should have uh, proof thereof uh, unless we don't have that we're not going to uh, certify the materials on site or even off site. So in this case, let's stick to the to the zero amount. Obviously, you when you're going to um, value that, you're going to negotiate with the contractor what is the value of the materials. Give me some invoices to just have a indication of the value of bricks, for instance, uh, that is on site. So in this case, there was no materials on site that leaves me with 3.99 million then if we look at the next section of of work it states in this column security adjustment and that is the guarantee that we've talked about basically these three types and uh, in this particular case you'll see there's a zero percentage and this is what we refer to as a, a variable construction guarantee where the contractor has selected that specific option where he actually uh, say well um, whatever is certified are 100 percent of the payment in other words there you can see we've certified 3.99 and the contractor will receive 100 percent for that obviously he'll receive full payment and obviously that will have an effect on his premium for that specific construction guarantee. The other one that we've learned about was uh, was the variable one with a fixed, uh, uh, with a payment reduction as well. And there we've learned about the 95% where we said we'll, we'll uh, keep 5% almost as a retention. So we're not gonna give the contract 100%, we'll only give him 3.79. So that figure is in 3790. 500 so if we select the a fixed payment uh, with a payment reduction we'll keep five percent of that value in the kitty so we only pay the contact in 90 95 percent of the value certified we will run through this um, in uh, 
further exercises where we can actually uh, demonstrate the, the actual differences between the guarantees that is selected by the contractor. Obviously, the contractor must select the guarantees prior to the signing of the contract. So we know in advance from day one which guarantee has been selected. Then you'll see in the next block, we've got escalation, cost fluctuations. So when you reach at this point, the 3.99 million, you need to go and, and now determine what is the actual escalation on that specific value of work. Now that is escalation. You, you've got your escalation certificates. You've got the uh, certificate no, number nine. Um, all the various work groups, the indices that is applied, you apply the Hallett formula. So you've got your main contract. These, the non-adjustables, your profit and attendance and day works. So for this certificate uh, nine, you've got a value for the main contract of 212,000 Rand. And then also for the nominated subcontractor electrical installation of 26,139 rand. So if we add the two values, if you add the total for the um, main contractor and the total of uh, the electrical contractor, that will give you the figure of 238,000 rand. So the contractor will receive a total of 238. If we add up the two, that will then be the total amount certified for up to and including uh, certificate nine. Then we deduct, and remember we, we've mentioned in our previous discussion that we always work accumulative total. So we deduct what we've previously certified. So in certificate eight, that was the total amount that we've certified before. So we'll take the total amount now, less the previous uh, amount certified, so we've got the net payment due to the contractor of 657 and 750 rand. There was no expenses, there was no penalties in this case. Uh, so that leaves us still with the same figure excluding that. Now we add the, the tax at 15% onto that total. And then we've got a range of various items that we can add and deduct. You'll find that for our purposes, we'll basically going to only focus on default interest and compensatory interest. Now, remember default interest is mainly for the late payment by the employer. So the contractor is entitled for interest. So in this particular example, um, certificate eight was paid late. Don't worry about the, the, the total here. Uh, it's imaginary, imaginary uh, total. It just illustrates that the previous certificate was paid late, certificate eight. And we we're going to calculate that in, in uh, future exercises. Compensatory interest, you'll see, and we've learned that compensatory interest is only applicable after practical completion. So we've, we haven't reached practical completion at this point. Uh, so therefore, uh, and also it's not a final payment certificate. So therefore, um, we will only cater for compensatory interest in my final payment certificate. And then we add up the tax, the default interest, and that gives me then a total, a positive total of 757 hundred six six hundred and forty seven rand and that is now due to the contract and remember this is now key and i've mentioned before never have if you have a negative figure a negative total then it's due to the employer meaning that the contractor must refund and let's hope that will never happen to have a negative figure in the total due because this specific uh, contract was signed under a variable construction guarantee, then we'll have to issue a, a percentage. We have to insert a percentage. Otherwise, if the other option, the uh, one with a, uh, the fix with a payment reduction, then we don't fill in the percentage and, e and even not 
the lower block in this case. So how do we know it's a variable construction guarantee? If we go back to your percentage, that is the indicator. If it's a zero, we, we will indicate it's a variable construction guarantee. Then we have to fill in those percentages. If it's the 95%, it's a fixed with a payment reduction, then we don't have to fill in this percentage and the blocks. So in this case, if we look at the percentage, uh, and it's not the percentage doesn't indicate that we've 95% complete with the project. It's, it's uh, related to the value of the work, the value, the construction uh, uh, contract value versus the contract sum. And also, if you look at the block in this case, it states that we've reached the, because of the 98%, we are now more above the 50% uh, range. So remember, you only fill in the percentage and you tick off the boxes here at the bottom if it's a variable construction guarantee. And obviously, uh, whoever is due to sign, which is in this case, uh, the principal agent, obviously, if you prepare the certificate as quantity surveyor, you will also then sign your certificate and forward it to the principal agent.